What's going on everybody? It's your boy Kilo Loco and today we're going to be working with Jetpack Compose. Now I'm going to be going over how to use navigation with Jetpack Compose. It took me a long time just to figure it out on how to do something simple like displaying a list of users and then navigating to the details list for that users, like the details of that user. And that took forever just to figure out. Now, there was a problem with Jetpack Compose at this point. Remember, it is in alpha at the time of recording this video. So the problem that I was facing was that I could not get an object, a parcelable object into a different view, such as a details view. So passing a user object to a details um, view was kind of hard for me. I was trying to figure it out and finally I figured it out based off of what is recommended by Android and the documentation and the workaround that I plan on implementing and showing you today. So with all that said, let's go ahead and jump right on in. Now, as you can see, I already have a couple of things going on here, but before we get into what's happening in this file, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the Gradle files. Right now, you can see that I am using um, you know, 100 alpha 8. So if you want to follow along, make sure that you have this one. Um, you know, you can do the work around yourself if you feel like, but as you can see down here, we don't have anything imported other than what was given to us by a blank compose project. So we're gonna add um, you know, the navigation and all that stuff shortly, but just so that you can see what's going on so far, we just simply have a user data class, we have our main activity that has a couple of users in there, and then our view is setting the content to this users view. Now the users view is simply a list of users. As you can see here, it's a lazy column for items, and we have a card just to make it look a wee bit little sexier and you know we have that list item inside of that card now we do have another view which is unreachable at this point because we haven't implemented the navigation piece so that's going to be the user details view and all it's going to do is it's going to take in a user and um, we have a box so that we can center this text right here which is simply going to show the description of the user so that's everything that has been set up so far now in order to get started, what we're going to do is we're going to jump over to the Android documentation page. Um, you're going to want to try to follow this as best as you can, but keep in mind that when you're copying this line of code at the time of recording, we're looking at the navigation version being alpha, um, alpha 4. I'm going to be using alpha 3 because I think alpha 4 is actually broken. So it's very important that you that you choose alpha three if it still says alpha four when you um, go to add this to your code. So in the in your module build.gradle file, we're just gonna go ahead and add that in like so. So as you can see, I have it right here and I'm just gonna simply update this to alpha three. So we have that, let's go ahead and sync now. We're gonna jump back and forth between the documentation just so that you can see that we're following along. Now, uh, we do have to have a nav host controller and we're going to be using this method right here, which will keep it in memory even after the view has been destroyed and recreated. So now that we have this in here and we have the build looks successful, let's head back over to our main activity. And what I'm gonna do is in my main activity, I'm actually gonna create a new function that's going to essentially handle all the navigation for us. So our our navigator is what I'm gonna call it. Our navigator is going to be in our main activity and that's going to essentially be the thing that controls where the view is going. So let's go ahead and add in a new function now. All right, so as you can see on line 47 right here, we have the nav controller and it's gonna be equal to the remember nav controller simply copied out of documentation. Next, what we need to do is we need to have a nav host object. Now you wanna make sure that you do select the right one. You don't want this one. We're not gonna be working with a nav graph. We're going to be working with a start destination, a route, and a builder. So make sure you have the correct one selected. And then you're gonna you're gonna pass in the nav controller that was just simply created, the line above. And then the start destination is going to be the key of whichever screen you want to show um, initially. So in this case, we're going to be showing the user's view initially, and the key that I'm going to give it is going to be called user's view. You can call it whatever you want, but yeah. 
So now that we have the nav host kind of configured, we have to still add in the builder, which takes in a bunch of composables. Now this is where you're gonna specify the key and the object that is correlated with that key. So let's go ahead and add in our users view and our user details view. All right, so as you can see in the builder, you simply specify a composable, you pass in the route, whatever you wanna call the key, and then you pass in the view or the composable object that you want um, to be returned whenever this key is called. So we have the users view being created with, we're passing in the users, which is uh, provided up here in our main activity. You know, you generally get that from a view model or whatever, but essentially we're creating our users view with our users like so as you can see right here. And then we're doing the same thing for composable or for the user details view, we're creating composable with a route called this. And then we have user details view being created. Now a user details view needs a user object, as you can see here, right? Now, in order for us to be able to do this, what we have to do is we have to pass an argument. We have to pass the, the, the user to this route. And in order to do that, we have to give it an argument as like a URI kind of. So let's go ahead and create the name of our URI. All right, and as you can see here, we have this user, which is going to be an argument that we're passing in this route. Now we need to specify what the value is going to be when we're going to be passing to this user. We need to specify um, what the actual keyword is, which is gonna be user, and the type that we should be expecting. So in this composable in order to create it we're gonna we already have the route but now what we need to do is specify the argument and the type so let's add that now all right so as you can see here I have this new argument that's being passed in, into the composable called arguments and it's a list of nav argument it's a different object nav argument nav argument takes in a name for whatever the parameter is going to be that you're going to be passing data into now we also need to specify inside of this inside of these braces what type we're supposed to be expecting and as you can see here there's a bunch of different types that you can be expecting now at the time of recording during alpha of three with this nav host stuff you can't pass parcelable unfortunately it doesn't work and it crashes your app whenever you do it um, I'm, I could show you an example but you can go you can feel free and try this out yourself but if you were to try to pass a parcelable type it will not work now it doesn't have it listed here you would have to import um, Kotlin parcelize but if you were to do that you would see nav type parcelable type and then you would do something like this you'd have nav type and it would look like parcelable type like this and then you would pass in your user it would be like um be like user colon colon class dot java or something like that now theoretically this is supposed to work in the future and this is the way that you would do it you would specify that the nav type is parcelable type but since parcelables don't support default types um, you can't use them right now. So in order to work around this, what we're going to do is we're going to pass a string. We're going to say string type. Now our object, our user object is obviously not a string type, but one workaround that I think would work is going to be using JSON. So instead of actually passing the object itself as a parcelized um, object, we can turn that object into JSON when we're passing it through in navigation, then turn it back into an object from that JSON on the other side. So that would allow us to have our nav argument right here, and then we could um, turn our JSON into a user object in this block right here. So in order to do that, let's comment this out, and we're gonna go back over to our build.gradle file. We're gonna add in Maven Central. So we have Maven Central in both of these areas right there. And then over here, what we wanna do is we want to add in G, uh, JSON. So there we go, we have JSON in our implementation. All we need to do now is sync, make sure that everything 
builds as expected. And I think we had a successful build. So I'm gonna head back over to our main activity. And what I'll do is, as you can see, we're back over here in our, our main activity. We already specified the arguments that we should be expecting, which is just a single argument under the name user. These have to be the same. And the type is gonna be string. So that means that whenever we get this backstack, um, this nav backstack entry, and we'll actually give it a name real quick. Whenever we get this backstack entry, we're going to be able to pull the arguments out of it. And we're going to be specifically looking for the argument called user, and it's going to be a string. So as long as we can get that, we can um, turn that from a string, which is the JSON to a user object and create this object here. So as you can see, backstack entry has a property called arguments, which has a function called get string by the key user. And then we're going to just wrap that in a let block and we're going to get our user by um, using JSON to create a user object from our JSON. And then we'll pass that user object into our user details view. So we have the decoding of the JSON, but right now what we also need is the encoding. So we set up our nav host, which is going to handle um, whenever we route to users view or user details view, and we pass or we pass some type of string here, but we haven't implemented that part yet. So now in the users view, where we're actually going to be calling the navigate function, um, we need to actually make sure that we're turning the user object that was selected into JSON and pass it through as an argument. So in our users view composable function, I can create a sub function right here and that can do the navigate to user for us. So as you can see here in this sub function called navigate to user, I'm passing in a user, I'm creating JSON from that user using JSON, and now I'm able to pass the argument. However, I don't have an I don't have access to the nav controller to do that navigation. So I'm gonna update the arguments right here for the user's view and make sure that it it accepts a nav controller as an argument. So I updated the function to now take in a nav controller, which is of type nav host controller. And once we have nav controller, we can say nav controller dot navigate. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that we select the one that says route. So we need to scroll all the way down to the bottom and it's going to be route and it takes in a string. So we select that one, make sure that one gets imported. We pass in the string to the route that we want to go to. In this case, we want to go to user details view, and then we want to pass in some string, which is our JSON to, uh, to the, or after the slash. So let's go ahead and copy that. We're going to paste it right here. We're going to do a slash, and then we're going to have our user JSON be passed in after that slash. Now we just simply need to make sure that we call navigate to user in this lazy column four items. We have this clickable modifier on our card. So whenever the card is selected, it will run this function and we have access to the user, which is right here. So we can just simply call navigate to user and pass in the user like so. Let's go ahead and run that. And if we did everything properly, then we should be able to navigate to the details view of the user that was selected from the list. Oh, and it looks like we do have an error. So let's go ahead and check out what the error is. And also I noticed that this is supposed to be app navigator. So let's go ahead and fix that, made that mistake. But what's this error right here? Oh, and this error is the fact that we're not passing in nav controller. So let's go ahead and make sure that we're passing that in as well. And now we have users view right here. So back to what I said, if we did everything right, we should be now displaying the app navigator, which will know that the nav host is being presented. The nav host is going to be showing whatever destination has this key users view, which we see right here, which is linked to this. And if we did all of our connections right for um, being able to show this composable right here, which is the user details view and passing in a string that can be turned to and from JSON, 
we should be able to see the user details view as well. So let's make sure that this is running. I'm gonna start it up. And as you can see, if we select Kyle and we have Kyle has an ID of one. If we hit back, it automatically works. Xavier has an ID of four. And that's pretty much it. So that's my workaround. I essentially use JSON to turn JSON uh, or turn our object into JSON and then turn it back into our object on the other side of that navigation. Like I said, eventually uh, we should be expecting that parcelize, um, parcelizable object will be able to be passed this way through Navhost. But for the time being, if you need navigation, then this is the right way to do it based off of what the documentation says. You can simply pass any arguments. You can pass any number of arguments that you want. Um, you just have to have them in this type of format right here where it's the user details view slash you know whatever the arguments you want to pass in there so that's going to do it for today i hope that you enjoyed the video i hope you learned something new if you want to watch more videos like this on um, native android development with kotlin and jetpack compose make sure that you subscribe i'm going to be adding new videos all the time um, so that's going to be it for today thank you for your time go out there and keep coding passionately